Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, isn't the ocean fascinating? Today we want to talk not about the structure of the ocean, but what's actually on the bottom of the ocean. Now think about this. These are the sediments on the ocean floor. Now recall, what's a sediment? A sediment's a broken up rock, right? A rock breaks up into smaller pieces. They can be like pebble sizes, or they could be, you know, sand sizes, or clay size. They can be tiny, tiny. They just barely kind of just make the water look muddy. But all that water, all that sediments we talked about coming from rivers, eventually it makes it to where? The ocean. And then what happens to them? Of course, we talked about how to make submarine canyons and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about the nature of the sediments themselves. So let's take a look at a diver at the bottom of the ocean. Do you notice as he, as he hits the bottom of the ocean, the sediments all get stirred up? Because there's lots of dirt and stuff at the bottom of the ocean. So what is it made up of? Turns out there's three kinds of sediments. So the first one is this. The pterogenesis sediments. Now that word looks like big word terra from the word earth. Genus, like genesis. They came from, genesis, the origins. The origins, they came from the earth or the land. And so these are sediments that came from the land. I'll say from the continent, right? Um, as I note, the big ones, the larger ones, the rocky sized ones, the rocky ones stay close to the continent, and that's because they're heavy. When they reach out to the earth, they just keep flowing and they, just, they stay. They, they, there's not enough energy to keep them and send them way out to the middle of the ocean. But the small ones, the clay sized ones, they can travel thousands of miles out into the middle of the ocean. Again, you've probably heard about there's currents in the ocean. So once that sediment gets into a current, it can go like a long, long ways. And it turns out that in the deep parts of the ocean, that it's getting about 0.4 inches for every 50,000 years. So think about this for a moment. It's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Not, and it takes a long time, right? You get about a half an inch every 50,000 years, and that's coming from the, the land. So those are pterogenesis sediments, or pterogenesis, right? That's the first one. The second one is pretty fascinating. It's biogenesis. Now, biogenesis from living things. Most of this is from dead um, crustaceans. I think I misspelled that. P forgive me. So you've got crustaceans, like uh, shellfish. They die. What happens when they die? The they live and they swim around the top of the ocean, they sink. And when they sink, their shells sink. So at the bottom of the ocean, there are places where there's lots and lots and lots of dead shells, or just not dead. I mean, they, the shell isn't really alive, but it had a living thing in it at one time. And that's pretty cool. The most common of these is the, the, the skeletons, maybe you know this, the skeletons of marine creatures. Right? Now it turns out one of the interesting ones is the ones that have calcium carbonate. This is the most one we, calcium carbonate is a chemical chemistry land, you remember that stuff? Uh, these are most shellfish. But it turns out that when the ones, most shellfish that have calcium carbonate shells, um, when they begin to sink, they get to the deeper ocean. The deeper ocean is more acidic. Acids react with carbonate, if you remember this from chemistry, and they'll dissolve. So oftentimes they just, what they happen is they make this sort of slurry it's like a deep, thick, oozy kind of uh, stuff down towards the bottom of the deep oceans because it's got all this calciums and carbonates because it's dissolved it, but it doesn't really mix that much. It turns out there isn't much current action at the depths of the ocean. There's a few, but fascinating that most of them don't live. But you still will find at the bottom of the ocean lots of this biogenesis, basically dead skeletons of creatures, and they just sink to the bottom. Now, if there's sort of material, that's actually also fine. Some creatures who feed off of these dead creatures who uh, make it to the bottom, because there's food source, they're gonna, uh, you know, they'll find their niche. And then the last one is called this, the hydrogenous sediments. Um, now these are the cool ones. Um, these are minerals that come out of solution. 
you've probably seen this. You've ever been in one of those caves, like the the, the with the stalactites and the stalagmites. But it turns out, under the ocean, under certain conditions, there's certain ones that a certain minerals can come out of solution. The one that's gotten the most interest as of late are the ones that contain. They're called the manganese nodules. <laughs> These contain manganese, cobalt, etc., and they just you find them on the bottom of the ocean. And why do we care? These, these cool rocks. Let's take a look at a video. In Hawaii, a ship weighs anchor. Scientists from Germany's Geozentrum Hannover Initiative have rented the vessel. They're on an expedition to find future sources of raw material at the bottom of the ocean. If things go well, the scientists will recover substances from depths of up to 5,000 meters. Some minerals are becoming scarce and expensive. Exploiting resources found on the seabed could become a lucrative field. The researchers want to find out how they can most quickly access valuable metals while keeping environmental impact to a minimum. The metals they're most interested in can be found in manganese nodules that are scattered on the seabed like potatoes in a field. You just have to harvest them, but that's tougher than it sounds. A chain bag is used to bring some up on deck. The method is effective, but it's only one of several possibilities. The researchers have brought up a large number of manganese nodules in this way. The rocks are valuable and ancient. It takes millions of years for a nodule to reach the size of a potato. The geologists take a closer look at their prized harvest. The nodules are washed, measured and then sliced into sections. The team wants to find out which metals are present in which nodules and in what concentration. Cobalt, copper and nickel are of special interest to industry. Precise analysis shows that the manganese nodules also contain small amounts of rare metals such as molybdenum, selenium and tellurium. These are in high demand among producers of electronic components. This device is known as a standard box corer. It works like an excavator. The scientists are using it to bring manganese nodules to the surface along with about half a cubic meter of seabed. These things are used in the production of batteries. And the world is changing, where we're starting to make electric cars, the Teslas and things of that nature, and they need lots of these things. And so they're starting to figure out how to mine these, but then there's some concerns that disturbing the bottom of the ocean would be another way to pollute. And so there's all kinds of very interesting people who are trying to mine these manganese nodules in certain parts, because they, they cluster in certain areas. And, and we find these kinds of things elsewhere. Not mo most of them are not economically important, but these are, and so now it's like, how do we find these cool things? So we find sediments in the bottom of the ocean in three kinds, the pterogenesis, the biogenesis, and the hydrogenesis. Genesis, a genus, be genus, I think be genus, oh, whatever. <laughs> sediments on the bottom of the ocean. Houston, no problems, because you're a sharp as tacks. We'll see you in class.